Welcome to Close the Door and Come Here, a Game of Thrones and a Song of Ice and Fire podcast with heavy leanings towards our two favorite characters, Brienne and Tormon Giant Spain. Man, there was a bear up there. <laughs> and that way the careless whisper theme instead there <laughs> maybe perhaps <laughs> we'll see how i feel by the time we de- or finish with this and how much i want to edit that in <laughs> but um yeah that was definitely a dedication um happily given to uh niche niche street who um sent us that request by email we love you too <laughs> um so hi i'm the hot lady of tarth hyphen posts on tumblr joined with guile Hi, I'm Guile, Guile and Subterfuge on Tumblr. Eon. Hi, I'm Eon, Eon Blue Negative on Tumblr. Clotho. Hi, I'm Clotho, Clotho Spindle on Tumblr. And returning guest, Dramas. Hello, my name is Dramas, and I am I Heart Dramas, all in one word, on Tumblr. Always happy Welcome to back. have you. Dramas. Yay. Yay. <laughs> So we're covering Game of Thrones, Season 6, Episode 4. Uh, spoilers for Game of Thrones, obviously, and potentially the A Song of Ice and Fire books. Um, trigger warning for potential rape discussion. Um, we're going to open the scene up with Long Claw and Jon Snow, who I guess didn't leave um, the wall like we previously thought. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. He's joined with uh, Dolores Ed, and uh, he's reminding him of his oaths and the vows he took when we hear a horn sound. And that's when we get Brienne, Sansa, and Podrick rolling. Sansa and John's eyes meet. They embrace. It's beautiful. Yes. I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> I know. I totally squeed whenever I saw it. I didn't realize how much I really needed to see the some Stark kids reunited. I and it know. Was, it felt wonderful. <laughs> because like every other time that they've reunited, it's been like for a split second and then it's over and then something worse happens. <laughs> so, so that good feeling you had for like five seconds is gone. Yeah. yeah, I made this weird gurgling sob noise that I didn't really know I was going to make either. Apparently it meant a lot more to me than I realized. Right. I, th- I think it has a lot to do with it being Sansa. Like, I know they've all been through the ringer, but I just, Sansa's really had it rough, you know, since I don't the know. First I mean, show. if it was Arya and John, though, oh, God. Oh, oh yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah, everybody's had it tough, but I don't know. It was just something about seeing her hug somebody who just didn't want to use her in any way, you know? It was wonderful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, inside, over a bowl of soup, John and Sansa reminisce over the good old days at Winterfell. Um, Sansa asks where he will go, and he corrects her, where will we go? She tells him she wants to take Winterfell back from the Boltons. John says he is tired of fighting. Sansa reminds him that if they don't take back the North, they'll never be safe, and she'll do it alone if she has to. And I can kind of see both sides of their position I kind of like this this idea of the two of them arguing about, like, who had it worse. Well, I was raped. I was murdered. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. They're getting into a victimization fight. I know. I'm assuming at this point, you know, he's, you know, told her the whole tale and she knows. Like, how do you believe that? Like, well, and then they murdered me and I was brought back to life. Like, John. Sure they did. the time you had the girlfriend be on the wall. (laughs) I think I think it's funny that they have the conversation of, you know, oh, I was such a horrible person to you. And can you forgive me? And, it's, and then he's like, OK, I'll forgive you, because it's like at this point, they've been through so much horrible things that the her being like mean to him is like nothing compared to like everything else that's yeah, happened. Yeah. Like she Water under the she bridge. did not try to kill him. So she's <laughs> It's a and weird then, pairing, too, right? Like, these are not the two Starks. Well, he's not really a Stark, but you know what I mean? Like, it's oh, not. But I could tell you right now that the moment that they they started having these 
moment, like the John Sansa shippers, it was just like a, we were going crazy. <laughs> it was like, yes, we have scenes and that we can manipulate and gif and <laughs> it's, it's, well, it I'd, life. I, it I'd argue it's not that crazy a ship because if you think back to George's original outline there is this moment he talks about he real john realizes he's in love with i think it was was it sons or was it aria it might I have been aria, aria, aria. In, that, in that letter mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so i don't think it's well, that I mean, far-fetched a lot of people, i mean a lot of people are thinking danny and and john are going to get be an item and danny is his aunt yeah and what really do we have to base that on? <laughs> you know, they're, they're both pretty. That's all that is. Well, fire and ice, right? Fire, fire and ice. Pretty much, yeah. Eh. Isn't there like um, in that um, whenever she's in that tower and um, yeah, the, the blue flower growing from the yeah. wall? Oh, yeah, that okay. frozen blue rose. Yeah, growing from the wall. Yeah. I mean, I feel like John's a bit of a step down from Drogo, but, you know, I guess who isn't? <laughs> That's right. He's a literal step down. <laughs> we make a lot of John's no short jokes. I'm sorry. Ample supply right here on Close the Door, kids. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next scene. It's uh, Davis and Mel. Davos asks her if she will stay at Castle Black. She tells him she'll do as Jon Snow bids. He's the prince that was promised. Davos finally asks what we've all been waiting for for three episodes. and that's Finally! It. What about Stannis? What happened to Shireen? And then we get Brienne stepping in and very boldly declaring she executed Stannis to a very heartbroken-looking Davos. Well, I oh mean, my she God. killed your boyfriend, but she's talking to both of them. That's the best <laughs> <laughs> I know, and the way she's talking, it's like, you better watch your back, red bitch, you better watch your back. Cause right? I already took King Stannis down, I could take you down too. I'm like, well, yes. We did, we did get an email um, from Argus Star um, about this scene, and she states, uh, Was I the only one who felt Brienne was unnecessarily cruel to Davos and Mel? I can't imagine book Brienne gloating like that over killing anyone, even Stannis. But I guess if they can turn Jamie into Cersei's poodle, they can turn Brienne into the Terminator. Bah. I thought I mean, she was kind of bad the Terminator, s- but uh, yeah, I thought I she mean, was slightly haughty. You know, a little bit too much for Brienne, but it, you know, it's how she's been on the show, so it didn't seem it right. didn't seem out of you know character for show Brienne. So I didn't mind it that much. That's a good point. That's something I need to remind myself because for me, when I saw this, I found it quite jarring. Like this, just this, just not a Brienne thing. She, I don't think either that she would do. But show Brienne, maybe, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, show Brienne's been pretty consistently portrayed as being a bit harsher than, well, mm-hmm. quite a bit harsher than book, mm-hmm. than book Brienne. Yeah. For better or for worse. I think if they'd have been portraying her as she is portrayed in the books, and then she did this and said these things, I would be like, okay, yeah. Although, I mean, given the way that, I mean, the one thing that she did say is she told them, you know, Stannis confessed it. And I think maybe that's like, and that wasn't necessarily the haughty part of it, but, you know, maybe that was the part of it that's the most important is that he knew what he did. Yeah. I mean, the most annoying part of this scene is though it was totally diverted from what I really wanted to see. And I wanted to see Mel get like dragged over the coals a little bit. Oh, about yeah. Shireen. Yeah. Cause they never, they yeah. never discussed. She got out of discussing what happened to Shireen again. You could yeah. see her yeah, face. I, thought, I was super happy. I'm <laughs> sure that. Oh, well, thank God that giant lady came along. It was like this guilty relieved combination on her face. <laughs> yeah. And also, it was kind of like when she goes, oh, he's the prince that's promised. I was like, that's kind of underwhelming. Because, like, when that, I, I know everyone's kind of, like, already knows. But I guess I would want it to be more. Instead, she's like, yeah, he's the prince that was promised. So, therefore, whatever he says goes. I don't know. Maybe I, she's trying to keep it on the down low because it was so disastrous last time. <laughs> right? Yeah. She must be like really sure this time. Yeah. Right. She wants to wait and see if he delivers then. <laughs> yeah, she can put the big attitude. signs out and the banners. <laughs> and I can't see John like believing in any of it. Well, I don't know. He did come back to life though. So what do you think? Is he going to be like buying into this? Um, he 
he's relatively humble. I mean, I don't know that he would get a big head over it, but. I don't think that he, I mean, I think like from his perspective, which, you know, one thing I do appreciate about the show is that they're actually giving him like emotional consequences for coming back from the dead Mm -hmm. in, in the sense that he's kind of like, well, I did everything that I thought was right because I thought I was like saving the wild things. I thought I was saving the world and those fuckers shanked me Mm -hmm. like (laughs) screw this shit. I'm going to go south. Like, so I, I don't, I mean, he might believe or might part of him might believe he's the prince that was promised and that he has this destiny. But I think another part of him would be like, so what? Yeah. Yeah. Destiny schmestiny. Vanity sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your wars. <laughs> that was a good imitation. <laughs> okay, let's go to the veil. Uh, sweet Robin sucks at Ooh. archery. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Uncle Peter. Yeah, have, What's he that? Had both eyes closed whenever he was trying to shoot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> great the best though is the look on uh sir royce's face when he was shooting it just looks like so um, i know he's so Fasioli is so great like he's so great in that role he and is. it's totally a thankless role and he just kills it yep. i know and he's just like you can tell that in his brain he's thinking this is the future ruler of the veil right yeah. here Great. <laughs> and it's only going to get worse. He's <laughs> still better than Joffrey. <laughs> True. Uh, I don't know. Gosh. Time will tell. <laughs> Gosh, that kid got tall, though. It looked like he was taller than Littlefinger. And deep voiced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's totally like awkward, <laughs> awkward teenager, too. It's so it's great. Yeah, he's got the perfect look. He does. Yep. And he, he pulls it he off really so does. well. <laughs> And Peter flouncing out of his little carriage. Like, he was so great. It was so great to see him again. <laughs> He's given Jamie a run for best Uncle Daddy. Funkle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that, I mean, you know, there's always, like, the thoughts, I think, in the fandom of if, you know, Robin is is Peter's son. But the casting on the show sort of makes me feel that way when I didn't necessarily even have an opinion. But, I mean, they seem like they've cast someone that could be his son. I have I have no doubt anymore. I don't. I, I as soon as that theory was proposed to me, I was like, I totally bought into it. That is yeah. his kid. Yeah. Although in the books, I mean, he's subtly trying to kill him, so I, it's sort of hard to buy. But in the show, it seems like yeah, he's his kid. Hmm. It could give me. It could be a little bit of an indication to I um. What's his face? Ah. Uh, the guy that's supposed to be his dad. Die with, with the stone eyes. John, John Aaron. John Aaron. Why he was so obsessed with lineage, too. Maybe he had his own suspicions about his own son. Oh, yeah. It's hard to imagine Lysa being, like, super subtle about her love of Peter, so you'd think he might have had some suspicions. He was away a lot, too, right? So lots of opportunity. She had tapestries of Peter's face. <laughs> Hidden <laughs> under the bed, rolled up. <laughs> Roll up into the bed, go to sleep. <laughs> oh, it's cute. It's adorable. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so to wrap this scene up, um, Sir Rice is not so welcoming when Peter arrives. He brings up um, Sansa's marriage to Ramsay and threatens to cross swords with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mind went into the gutter right then. <laughs> All of ours did. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when Littlefinger not so this is um, well, he gets a little bit threatening when Littlefinger not so subtly accuses Sir Royce of betrayal. And then we get that very husky voice, Sweet Robin, suggesting the moon door. Um, That's his answer for everything. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gives a reprieve uh, with Littlefinger's counsel. Uh, he also suggests they help Sansa in the north. And I put suggest in quotations because the scene was all about Peter leading the young lord. I thought this was actually a really good contrast, not contrast, a really good callback to the scene in King's Landing where Cersei kind of has the um, the King's Guard threaten and then unthreaten Peter just to kind of prove a point as to, you know, she's the one ultimately with power of life and death over him. And he's doing the same thing to Royce. So I thought it was like a nice little callback of um, now Peter has the power. Peter has the power. <laughs> the power in the Peter. 
Okay, so next thing we have Tyrion. Um, he has invited the Masters to Marine, much to the objection of Miss Sandy and Grey Worm. In the pyramids, Tyrion asks them what they want, and it's all for Daenerys to leave Slaver's Bay. Tyrion negotiates on behalf of Daenerys, gives the Masters seven years to phase out the practice of slavery. They will end their support of her of the Sons of the Harpy, and this is something they deny even doing. Tyrion says, "Fine, fine, fine. You'll stop anyway." Tyrion rings a little bell and whores emerge. I'm sure they're well-paid whores, not slaves at all. <laughs> I think oh, that was God. the point, right? <laughs> this whole line about, you know, you'll enjoy something that's... I don't know what it was, but yeah. Paid I whores. Just, I just really like the conversation uh, right before they meet with the representatives of Yunkai and Astapor and all those other guys. Um... The conversation he has with Masande and Grey Worm about slavery and how he feels like he knows all about slavery because he was a slave for what, like three days or something? A week? Two mm-hmm. weeks? I don't know. And meanwhile, Masande and Grey Worm, I'm like, are probably rolling their eyes at him because they've been a slaves there pretty much their whole lives. Like Grey Worm's and like, they're like, oh, <laughs> you're a great expert on being a slave, okay? I did like, um, and if you listen to the after the, or watch the after the episode with, um, David and Dan talking about, um, kind of thinking about Abraham Lincoln in this, in this set of scenes. And, you know, I think the Lincoln quote, which I actually looked up, that's my podcast research for the week is I looked up Abraham Lincoln quotes (laughs) and it's, um, if I could save the union without freeing any slave, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that. And I'm going to maybe make a leap of faith that David and Dana are somewhat aware of American history and how, you know, Lincoln's hope of say of saving the union while compromising in slavery turned out like not well. Spoiler alert, civil war. Mm. And I think, you know, Tyrion is very obnoxiously condescending in this scene to Missende and Grey Worm. And I think he just, I hope, I hope to God that this turns out that it is a huge misstep of his because he's acting as if peace is the actual goal here when, you know, I think Danny through her actions has shown that, you know, peace is not the goal. Freedom is the goal. And yeah. You know, I would strongly say that, yeah, I completely agree with her in this case, and that you cannot compromise on a moral matter like slavery. I mean, imagine the fifth or sixth year of Tyrion's, like, seven-year slave plan. Like, what the hell is that going to look like? It sounds like like nothing would have been done. It's a terrible plan. (laughs) Status quo. Yeah, let's kill day six, or year six, day 364, kill all of your slaves. I mean, that would be the plan. I was hoping it was some kind of like, the only thing I could think of is maybe it's some kind of like, oh, let's just put them off for a little while. But at the same time, like, I don't know. It seems like a terrible plan anyway you slice it. Yeah, because I I almost feel like that would buy them some time in order to consolidate and figure out something to attack them with. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about years. Yeah. I'm just talking about a few months or something. You know, <laughs> just something to put I mean, them off it's for a, a few peaceful, weeks. <laughs> is a peaceful slaver's bay with the with the status quo a good thing? Ask the people of the Summer Islands who are getting raided constantly and their children being carried right. off as slaves. Oh, like, yeah. No, no, no I don't a agree with burning, that at all. A burning yeah. to the ground slaver's bay. God, I am a yeah. Targaryen. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I was just to the yeah. ground. <laughs> no, no. I, I agree. Just uh, to make that clear, I agree with you. Oh, I just, yeah. I'm no, wondering I what the show's... You know, I'm wondering if the show is portraying Tyrion as really being that stupid or if there's some kind of like brief logic behind, you know, oh, we'll just say this for the next couple of weeks and then, you know. I would I argue they're portraying him as a, that stupid. That'd be like more interesting if you, you know, really, if there is something he doesn't know for all of his bravado <laughs> and talk. I would argue that I think he's just buying himself some time. I just think he's just trying to get a, a little bit of peace so that he can figure out something else. Hopefully Daenerys will be back. And I even think Dinklage kind of played it that way because when Miss Sandy and Grey Worm were going back and forth with him in the other, the next scene where they're outside, um, he doesn't look so confident. Good. I mean, I, that would be, that'd be great because I think otherwise it's, it's either he's right, which is an absolutely horrible choice. Mm-hmm. 
or, you know, he's wrong, which is less interesting than he's, you know, or maybe he's like waiting until someone can control the dragons and then, you know, we'll burn you all to the ground. (laughs) He's waiting for Danny to come back. Yeah, she's not going to have any of that if she comes back. (laughs) Right. I will say that Vicente's outfit was outstanding. It was. I loved it. (laughs) It's so great. (laughs) She has the best clothes on the show. Yeah, she does. I mean, she could wear a potato sack and look amazing, though, to be fair. I know, but she also gets really good clothes. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just to wrap it up, um, there is a portion where Tyrion does go to the lower part of the pyramid. He speaks with the former slaves, and they demand answers. They question Grey Worm and Miss Sandy, who ultimately back up Tyrion, but outside, they have choice words with him, and um, they just keep reiterating, you can't trust them, you don't understand them, and they will use you. I think we can go on to the next. And that is Jora. He's having a hard time keeping up with Dario, and Dario is a total ass about it. He tells Jora, don't think you can ride the dragon. <laughs> and I just I really kind of wanted Jora just to like dry wash Dario's face with his bare hands here. <laughs> like his bare yes. like gray scaled arm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was such a dick. I know. It was enjoyable to watch, but yeah, well played. <laughs> I don't know why. Why was he suddenly a dick, though? You think they've just been spending too much time together? I think so. it's like a long. It's the heat. Trip. They're no, probably dehydrated. Just... They're you know they're hangry. All kinds of things going on. <laughs> <laughs> they're hangry. Horny. <laughs> Horny. I feel Horny like and so, hangry. I was recently hiking out west, and I sort of felt like Jorah the whole time. <laughs> I had a lot of sympathy for him. <laughs> you could not ride the dragon, guy. <laughs> I could not ride the dragon. <laughs> uh, they hunch down on a cliff and they survey the Dothraki city. Under light protest, Dario hands over his weapons. They are not allowed in the city. When Dario goes to hand over his favorite knife, Jorah's grayscale is revealed. And during the night, they sneak in. <clears throat> in the alleys, they are trapped by two Dothraki, stopped by two Dothraki, and Jorah's wine merchant story doesn't convince. Jorah fights, one runs, Dario hits him down. Jorah is getting the life choked out of him when Dario returns and stabs the Dothraki from behind. Um, he then takes a, a rock and repeatedly smashes the dude in the face or in head to, I guess, hide the stab wound. <laughs> I just found it funny that he was still going with the wine merchant I, um, story when, like, on his shirt, he's got, like, blood stains on it on one of his arms. I'm like, what are you going to tell them? That it's ketchup or something? I don't it's know. Why. It's wine. Wine stains. <laughs> Any true wine uh, fan knows blood and wine look totally different, though. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Okay, so we have Danny in the meantime. She's chatting with the Dosh Colleen and sharing a not so, they're all sharing not so pleasant stories of their past lives as the wives of Cal, Cal's. Danny declares she has to make water. The younger former Khaleesi and Danny go for a walk. Jorah and Dario grab the girl. They want to leave immediately, but Danny has a plan. Oh, I got excited when I saw who was playing the young Khaleesi. Because I rem- remember her. She's she plays one of the main characters in a sci-fi show called Killjoys. I mm-hmm. forget her name, but she plays a character named Dutch. And in that show, she's very badass. And at first I was like, am I imagining this? And then I looked it up and yeah, it's her. Cool. She was good. I'd be happy if, um, you know, she continues on in the role for a little bit. I will say that if I were Jorah and Dario, I might have claimed to be like coal merchants because God knows all of the Dothraki, male and female, go through their share of eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. They'd be like, oh, oh, quick, what do you got? What do you got? You would look really good in this. <laughs> yeah. Then the gig would be up. This yellow shirt and there's like five, like 50 different shades. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> All right, let's go to King's Landing. Uh, we have Marjorie in her cell. She is visited by Septa Yunella, um, and then she's taken to see the High Sparrow. 
He asks her, um, if I let you go now, where would you go? Marjorie replies, my brother, husband, family. High Sparrow counters with money and power. He shares his life um, before as a cobbler, making fine shoes for the likes of her. He also tells her of his moment of realization of his own sins. Basically, he got real drunk and had an orgy at a feast. (laughs) And like felt bad. Like he basically, I feel like he was equating like a hangover with like a more like a moral failing. Like, dude, you're just hungover. It's fine. <laughs> it's it's be a have some greasy food. It'll all be okay. Air the dog. You'll it be must good. have been a horrible party. I mean, for you to find religion <laughs> after. <laughs> after. <laughs> what a downer. Yeah. Plus, I mean, I think like his whole like his whole story kind of didn't make sense because, you know, Marjorie says, well, I would go to my husband and my family. And he's all like riches and wealth. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I think she actually just like wants to go to it's her really, family. Yeah, right. Like it's not an earthly thing. No. It's like love. He's protected. I can't help it if they're wealthy and powerful. <laughs> right. I mean, if they were poor, she'd say the same thing. Yeah, very true. Let's see. He um, then takes Marjorie to see Loris, and he looks rough. He's um, mentally not holding up as well as she. He whispers that he just wants it to stop. And I think we know now why Marjorie is going to play ball with these fanatics. Yeah, I mean, I think I read somewhere that we're supposed to assume that Loris has been, like, sexually abused as well. Oh, no. (sighs) Why... Okay, why why are we supposed to think that? I don't know. I read it on a podcast somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know the story somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I read it on Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> substantiate these rumors. Uh, and he's been through a lot anyway, whatever it is, because yeah. this is not Loris at all. <sighs> I just, uh, I feel kind of bad for this whole character, though. He's... Because you think of Loris in the books, and he's the one willing to go to Storm's End. and yeah, He gets that moment of begging Cersei to, you know, basically let him go on a suicide mission, you know? Yeah. 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 There's a and, lot of heroism there that we don't ever, that we've never seen. Yeah. And he's really just kind of in pain as this pretty boy weakling. Yeah. He's a weakling so much. Like, I do think in those scenes with Renly, he was definitely painted as the more politically savvy and, like, kind of the driver of of what Renly was trying to do. Like, he was definitely an equal to kind of Marjorie's savvy. That was so long ago, though. <laughs> no. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Let's go on to Cersei. Um, she's eavesdropping on Pycelle, who's offering Tolman counsel. She interrupts and then dismisses him. Pycelle leaves very slowly. <laughs> I loved I it. Loved how sexy he so was. <laughs> face. I loved it. His chains rattling. <laughs> like just the, the yeah. shooting of the scene, like going to the wide shot there was so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was. It was fun. Poor Pycelle. <laughs> Um, Tolman doesn't want to antagonize the High Sparrow. He asks his mother point blank if she likes Marjorie. Cersei tells him that's unimportant. Marjorie is the queen. She accuses the High Sparrow of having no respect for kings or queens. And she, he, all he wants to do is knock them down and replace them with fantasies. Tolman admits he has spoken to the High Sparrow. Cersei tells him he can always trust her. And we don't actually hear what he shares. So this makes this next bit interesting. Mm-hmm. Cersei and Jamie meet with a reluctant Olana and Kevin. Olana tells them they aren't welcomed. She tells Cersei she's been publicly shamed. You know, what else can you offer? Jamie defends, tells her Cersei has Toman's trust and ear, shares news that Toman and High Sparrow have been talking of Marjorie, and this kind of gets Olana's attention. Cersei drops the bomb that Marjorie will also be made to walk before the people of King's Landing. Olena is dead set against that idea. Cersei says, I agree. So, like, why would... Okay, I'm not really following. What's Marjorie's sin, basically, is not admitting that her brother's gay? And her punishment... Like, how does does her punishment at all, like, have anything to do with 
or is in any way related to like the depth of what Cersei did. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. So that's what I'm wondering. Is it's just this, like that's like their punishment for every woman? Is this true? That's what I'm wondering. Is is oh. this walk that she's supposed to do totally made up by Cersei just to manipulate Olena? Oh. oh. That's what I think. It could be. Oh. I mean, she Cersei is also manipulating Kevin because she brings up Lancel. Oh, finally, someone brings up Lancel. I know. <laughs> we get absolutely nothing with it. Nothing. Well, I you see how Jamie, Jamie and Cersei, they're pushing like um, Alina to send in the Tyrrell army to get um, Marjorie out. So that leaves like the Lannister army scot free while they're sinking these Tyrrell, the Tyrrell army on the Faith, and the Faith is going to be pissed off of the Tyrrells. It's just, it's a mess. But like they're allied. Like that's sort of the problem here. <laughs> it's. They are actually in, like, a real alliance. So it still kind of gets to this huge blind spot that Cersei has, both in the show and the book, which is that the Tyrells are actually, they've they've tied themselves to the Lannisters for better or for worse. Like, they are, like, one of the only people that actually aren't their enemies. If mm-hmm. Tommen goes down, so yeah. do the Tyrells. Be, yep. uh, right. Now, Lana, she just doesn't want to deal with Cersei. It's just kind of blamer. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. Mm. Anyway, yeah, Kevin responds with the Lancel question that, of course, he wants him back. Um, but he also adds that the Sparrows have many friends in the city and it will be civil war. Olana chimes in with better them than us. <laughs> <laughs> Things are going to get tense. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Jamie does his usual good job of, well, actually, I don't know if he was standing behind Cersei in the scene. This might have been one where he actually got to stand in front or next to her. In the beginning, he was right behind her, and I actually put in my notes, he was touching her. Like, it's so strange to me. I mean, I guess everybody knows and nobody cares, but he was right. I swear to goodness, it looked like he was touching her, like rubbing shoulders with her. And I'm thinking, have they just forgotten that they're supposed to at least pretend that they're not screwing each other? Does it not matter anymore? (laughs) I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. Definitely. I, kind of, I mean, do you even care anymore? I, I don't Yeah, I don't know why it bothered me, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good point, though, because it's the whole legitimacy thing, right? And they're all supposed to be pretending Tolman's the. Yeah. A Baratheon, so, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, Theon. Oh, what's that? Drama? Okay, with the whole thing i don't know i'm like confused because i'm like when i was hearing them about how like they wanted to bring in another army you know the tyrell army into king's landing i was thinking it made me think back to like uh uh robert's rebellion and how King's Landing initially welcomed the Lannister army because they were the ones that were supposed to save them. But instead of saving them, they came in and sacked them. And I'm like, is this going to be like 2.0? There's some parallels there, isn't there? Yeah, I don't know. I just had a moment. So it could be the moment when the Tyrells just like... So I wonder if that would be like... The mountain's gonna smash Tommen's head in to like be the parallel to smashing Egan and Rainey's down. Ah! How dare you! Don't say that. <laughs> I go too, that went too dark. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Let's go Don't to Theon. He, he's always Don't bright and ideas. sunny. <laughs> <laughs> it's always sunny in Pike. <laughs> yeah. So Theon arrives at the Pike. Um, Yara gives him a not so welcome home. Uh, she accuses him of wanting the throne, and she grabs him and demands to know what he wants. The end tells her, you should rule the Iron Isles. Let me help you. Oh, God. Dear God. Alfie Allen in this scene. I know. He's, He's so brilliant. brilliant. He is so fucking good. <laughs> I just, he's, I mean, she's, you know, she's really good, too. Just, I think she's still, you know, she's horrified by what he's become, and she's just trying to provoke him into kind of showing any of his old spirit. It's sort of, it's weird in a sense because she, you know, she wants him to 
support, you know, she wants him to give up his claim, but she also wants him to be a Greyjoy. She wants him to be her brother. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that, you know, she's just, she's trying anything. And it's just so heartbreaking because he's so broken. Yeah. He just wants to, like, get a hug. I mean. He's the, he's the only um, brother, sibling he, she has left now. Her dad's dead. And her uncle, you know, her uncles are, one of them is a priest, pretty much, and the other one is gonna, is going against her and trying to get the throne, so. They're both who, assholes, basically. Who does she, yeah, so who does she have? Just Theon. Yeah, it's too bad she doesn't have the reader, cause I mean, she, you know, I feel like, God, you know, she could just take Theon over to Ten Towers and he could just be happy. And I feel <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like it's just not gonna end well for Theon. Yeah. No. Well, or baby. Anybody on the show, really. I mean, are we really? kidding? <laughs> Ramsey's doing pretty well. He's, <laughs> he's living the high life. He's always he got really a face. Uh, speaking of Ramsey, uh, Osha <laughs> is brought into his chambers. Uh, he asks if she knows his banners. She replies, the flayed man. Does that worry you? Do you eat them after? No. Then I've seen worse. Which I thought was a pretty great line. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, hey, Ramsey thinks it's a great line. <laughs> Ramsey's beckons. like, oh, I've never thought about that before. <laughs> Maybe I should. <laughs> oh, God. Screw oh, the, the dog. next episode. <laughs> Forget dog food. Ugh. He beckons her over and she climbs on his lap. He whispers about Theon Greyjoy and how he told him about the Stark boys and how they escaped. Ramsey sticks her with his knife before Osha can stick him. And uh, bam. Oh, Ramsey gonna Ramsey. We all knew that right. was gonna happen. I was I just mean, glad it was quick. Thing, like, yeah. It's so boring at this point. Like Him doing anything else would have actually been interesting. And it kind of is sad because when she does ma- say that line about, um, you know, do you eat, do you eat him after? Like, I can't say his name. Unfor- I can't say the actor's name, but he, you know, he responds to that with like a different sort of humor than we normally see from Ramsey. And you kind of, I mean, I at least felt like, oh, I kind of would like to see Ramsey do something different or just have a different reaction because the actor can certainly play that. And it would have just been, you know, it would have been something different. I don't know. Just, I mean, how many people has he killed so far this year? It's boring. Yeah, it's disappointing, too, just to have mm-hmm. Osha, who's so much fun to watch, the actress, mm-hmm. yeah, just to be killed off so uh, quickly. Yeah. And they really you haven't s- seen her in a good while. Yeah, yeah, and they really made a big deal that they liked her, and it was such a huge deal. You you really got the impression that they were going, and they may have intended to, that they were going to do more with her. Yeah. This. It is I mean, disappointing, though. You know, they could have said, you know, they could have had Ramsey send her with a letter to the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have been completely, yeah. it wouldn't have wrecked the plot. It would have kept her alive for, to be a character. You know, inevitably, if you think the entire story is moving northward, yeah. it might have been interesting to have her there or to mm-hmm. have her in the battle, you know, the battle of Winterfell to come. Yeah. 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 I like that idea, but that didn't happen. So yeah. bummer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Castle Black. Um, a Bolton man approaches, and inside the dining hall, Sansa inspects questionable food while Tormund makes googly eyes at Brienne. And we had a ton of mail and for these, this whole scene, so here's, a, here's some questions generated from those. First is from Doxa. She says, I hear Tormund was making eyes at Brienne, and that has me lolling. Has anyone abandoned ship with Larry being so blind by Carol? Has that changed yet? Still? No? Really? Maybe it's time to hope for Brienne to get some wild loving. Of course I'm kidding, but it sure does feel more and more with each passing episode that there won't be enough time to get Jamie back to himself for a true reunion with Brienne. I guess we'll see. I'm just finding myself rather disappointed, even as someone who only catches spoilers and recaps of the show Doxa. I love that Doxa has just like a passing knowledge of what's going on with the show. (laughs) Well, she's kind of like the people that have a passing knowledge of the books. <laughs> <laughs> so has anyone abandoned ship? Are they uh, all? You know, I'm a multi-shipper, so there's always room for new ships for me. <laughs> I actually uh, don't. I have some issues with beyond like them being like big warrior people. You know, their entire 
like philosophy of life is completely different. You know, Brienne is a born kneeler. That is like what she has done her whole life. She's looking for someone to kneel to. And now uh, I realize like in many ways that might make her sound like the perfect woman. <laughs> I don't mean in the literal sense. <laughs> Whereas I think, you know, in Tor- you know, in Brienne we've seen is attracted to like that gallantry and that knightly valor that she pretty. thought was in Renly and the pretty boys. And I mean, not that Tormund's not pretty, but you know, he's not gallant. He's not a knight. He's not, you know, this is not the man who's going to woo her. Well, I think Tormund's digging on her. I don't think I see that being returned. <laughs> She's like kind of horrified. <laughs> I, I think someone on Tumblr was like, someone should write a fic where Tormund attempts to steal her. <laughs> yeah, let's see how well that would go over. I don't think that would work out very well. I want to <laughs> read it though. I think we it's had fun. another. I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. I was. Just, we had another question too. A non on Tumblr asks. So, what do you guys think of this crackpot fear that Tormund is going to replace Hyle? It's not going to happen. But I thought it was a hilarious thought. It's a nice thought. It's funny. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to. That's exactly what I was just going to say. I think if if things had gone differently and you know Jamie was there, you know, I could sort of see the amusement in a little more. It's just, yeah. you know, it's just hard. To, that's the only part of it that's hard to watch, is because you just know what hasn't happened yet. So, <laughs> but yeah, I think I could yeah. enjoy it if if Jamie had been there and it would have been sort of a dynamic, you know. For, you know, maybe yeah. Brienne could have just said like, "Dude, I have a boyfriend." <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, she did. I, I thought. It, I thought it was funny. It was probably just a threatening thing, but I noticed that as soon as he stood up in the courtyard and stared at her, she touched her sword hilt. So oh. you know, Jamie's shipper mind goes, "Oh, she's thinking of Jamie." But I know she was probably just trying to be, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back off. Well, I don't know if she would actually recognize a look like that. Like she wouldn't know what it means. Yeah, she looked yeah. very confused when he's like, you know. Yeah, it was probably just, kinda, you know, oh, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm protecting myself with my sword. I understand and that. Yeah, she's yeah. like, this man is deranged. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. Oh, that I was hilarious it. during the dinner, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But ships have been, ships have been, uh, built on less than that. So. This one oh, is, go, this one seems there's already fan fiction for them that has, like, Hundreds of kudos oh, in, yeah. I mean, you know, two days. It's going full it's steam. Just, I'm seeing stuff on Facebook, which I don't follow a lot of fandom stuff, so I'm seeing stuff on – that's really – I was like, oh, my goodness, this is going far. Well, there's stuff yeah. in, like, the mainstream media everywhere about it. The ship you never knew <laughs> you really wanted, is. you know, all – it's everywhere. I don't know if I want it. It's just really fucking hilarious to watch. Like, I've been I've enjoying the so gifts. I've seen so many memes. Bits. Yeah, and I have too. I've seen, I've seen, was it uh, Castle Black and Chill? And oh, I saw that today. <laughs> <laughs> Castle Black and Chill. Yeah. <laughs> With Tormund leaning back. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a Jamie and Brienne shipper, so um, I was also thinking inside my head. I'm like, Jamie, go, but go to the north and fight for your woman, because there's a wildling that's looking at her play. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe his hand, his hand, it isn't there. Is tingling. I don't know. <laughs> I, it's not a crack think... ship, though. On the show, it's not a crack ship. Let's just clear that up because clearly, it was so freaking obvious. The whole world picked up. I on know. It. Ed, yeah. you see Ed's face. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Pod was giving him like a a warning look too well, and you that, know, he's oh, very intimidating well there <laughs> were a few people maybe Tormund was trying to play footsie with Brienne <laughs> he, got he played footsie with Pod <laughs> 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 and I thought that's the one bright side out of it because there were people that did uh, I don't know anymore but had I heard some well, the Pod, yeah, the pod shippers. and Brienne shippers I said now they can switch to you know Brienne and Tormund I mean that does disturb me slightly less <laughs> <laughs> But Pod and Brienne? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, she, she first left. went off with them. People were like shipping them. Oh, that's gosh. way more disturbing. Yeah. Pod and Brienne. What the oh, no, that's what I mean. Pick. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm confused. <laughs> I've read it. I mean, Pod and Sansa are right there and they're adorable. <laughs> oh, she's going to be with John. Don't kid yourself. No, no. It's John Sansa. <laughs> John. The, the hand holding. And... Or the hound. Or <laughs> Littlefinger. It could happen. Uh, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, John is given a letter, 
and it says to the traitor and bastard Jon Snow. It's a letter from Ramsay in which he reveals he has Rickon. He wants Sansa back. In his letter, he threatens to slaughter every wildling under his protection. Sansa snatches the letter from Jon and finishes it. Um, she reads every grisly thing written. And it's signed Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. John wants to know how many men he, well, um, Ramsay has in his army. Sansa says 5,000. Tormund tells John they have 2,000 fighting wildlings. Sansa tells John that the Northern families are loyal if he asks. John nods. I think he's in this thing. Yeah. I, I, I really loved how, like, Every so often, Ramsay would put in bastard, bastard, like, as if to taunt him even more. Right. As if, you know, having Rick on and doing that to Sansa wasn't enough and actually having his castle, his family's castle, in his power. I mean, the whole letter was quite poetical with, like, the repeating come and see, come and see. Like, I wouldn't have thought Ramsay had it in him. <laughs> Maybe he could have done that instead of kill Osha. Help, you know, have her help him write poetry. I don't know. It would have been more interesting. <laughs> yes, that's what I, I, I think of Osha. I think of poetry. <laughs> or even to see Ramsey writing the note and not have Osha in there would have been more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Crossing. I mean, if you see the letter, because, you know, they released the letters and, and some of the props, like, it's all centered. It's, like, very, it's very much a piece of poetry. It's great. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, Ramsey having a bubble bath, and he's, he's writing his letter. <laughs> does, so does, does, anybody ha- does anyone have sloppy writing, or are they just having the same person on crew do the calligraphy for <laughs> I think so. Oh, I'm sure they're having the same person crew. <laughs> Which, maybe they're available for wedding invitations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's yeah. go to Essos. Um, we have the cows. They're gathered to discuss the death of Ego by Rock. <laughs> Next on the agenda, Kel Drogo's widow. Um, they argue a bit. She belongs with the Dosh Colleen. Um, another says the masters of Young Kai want her. They're going to give us 10,000 horses. Danny, who's present, asks them, don't you want to know what I think? And Leather creaks as they look up at her. <laughs> Cal Morrow tells her, you have no voice. Danny recounts how Cal Drogo promised to gather her army, ride across the salt water, smash the stone houses. She tells those assembled. None of you are fit to lead the Dothraki. But she says, I am. And Cal Moro calls her a crazy cunt to think they will serve her. Danny grins and pushes over two brazers. And that little grass hut lights up fast. <laughs> <laughs> I love how someone, I think it was the Got Thrones crew, commented that it was like literally thatch roof cottages. So it's exactly like the Trogdar, the Burninator sketch. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> if you're familiar with that. I'm not, but it sounds hilarious. I had, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a little bit of a problem with you have this group of these big, strong cows and all gathered together. And as she's pushing these braziers, you would have I would have thought that, you know, maybe one or two of them would have probably like grabbed her and kept her from doing any of or just any busted of the, through the side of the building. Yes, <laughs> <I was laughs> too, like I'm a like, Kool-Aid man or something. <laughs> Maybe the Dothraki are like horses and they freeze with fire. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, could be. I don't know. They were really scrambling. Was yeah, kinda, yeah. I like that she's good. also imper- impervious to like falling beams or like <laughs> any other danger related to fire. It's not just fire, like nothing in there, you know, could cause a problem. Hmm. <laughs> Well, it is important to note that the doors outside have been barred by Daro, Dario and Jora. The entire city gathers around the blaze as Danny emerges from the flames. They all bow, including Jora and Dario. And it's conquering time, bitches. <laughs> so yeah. when I saw this scene, I couldn't. This is like, OK, there's two references. And um, the first one is for anyone. And we can post it on Facebook. Or on, not on Facebook, excuse me, on Tumblr to um, Fantasy Factory Beer, where their logo is 
a cat with a gun riding a fire breathing unicorn with a rainbow yeah. in the background. Pure like awesome. it was kind of like that. It like so, it was like pure awesome. Pure yeah. awesome and like that's kind of, you know, Danny you wanted to see like the dragon flying behind her and it's like, yeah, like rock concert. And then I was thinking <laughs> of um in the movie Talladega Nights, where the one guy who's Will Ferrell's friend is talking about his vision of Jesus as, as the lead singer in a rock band with a choir of angels as the backup as the backup singers, and he's in the front row, wasted. <laughs> like, that's, instead of like everyone bowing down, there should have been like just one Dothraki who was like, "Yeah, just headbanging." <laughs> Head banging, like holding up a, you know, holding up a torch or something. Yeah. Like, you can do it. So it's like a Rob Snyder yeah. yelling free bird. I want to know how they talked Amelia Clark into doing another nude scene. I know. Scene. That's they must have paid her a lot. She of did an interview. Cash. She actually did an interview. Um, and I read the article, and she said that it was not her. And I don't know why she waited so long, but she said she's been posting on Instagram about it that it was Una Chaplin that the quote that was alluded to being hers about not getting naked again was never her and that she wanted to clarify that and that this was all her and she's proud of her nudity work and i just saw that a couple of days ago so i mean uh, you know i have to say if i were amelia clark i would have no issues like being nude being either naked all the time. <laughs> i had no clue though <laughs> yeah i thought it was her up until because she hadn't gotten naked this yeah. season so i just assumed too yeah yeah that was uh, Mr. Drama's favorite part of the episode. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I just looked at him and he was just like, boobies. <laughs> I was like, I'm cr- over here crying over Stark sibling reunions. And he's just like, yeah, boobies. Well, I mean, I'm yeah, wondering. Funny, gonna- I think that's how a lot of the writing sessions probably go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, what are they going to do now that they sort of shot their wad with this with her? Like they usually save these big grandiose, like they must have something supersonic planned if, you know, we've gotten this type of, you know, they, they have these little finales with her, you know, whether it's the dragon coming yeah. down every season. It's kind of repetitive, but. Well, not even mid season yet, right? And <laughs> Astapor yeah. was the fourth episode of season, of season. Oh, was three, it earlier in? Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it could yeah. be, you know, she gets her, I mean, frankly, you know, maybe she's not in the next couple of episodes or maybe she doesn't have a lot of story because it feels like um, the Iron Islands and, you know, coming soon, the Riverlands kind of start to have a bunch yeah, of story. Yeah, they're going to need space. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're going to need a little bit of that space well, from, from Essos. Yeah, I'm happy with that. King's Landing, cause, is, yeah, King's because Landing is wrapped King's up Landing too. can burn up. For I mean, for what we got... <laughs> From what we got, though, I mean, now she's like the cow of this massive mega Kalasar now because everything was, everyone was gathered at yeah. Face of Rock, and yeah. I really, I figure now we, since we saw like the peace talks between Tyrion and those great masters, Danny's gonna undo totally anything that Tyrion tried to set up with those great <laughs> masters I'd be, I'd be happy by if having they like skipped that, that. Kalasar just yeah. No, go well, on, I mean, sorry. I kind of would be like, I have three dragons and a Kalsar of 100,000 people <laughs> and the Unsullied and everything else, and the rest of you can fuck off and do what I say. <laughs> yep. See, I told you I'm a born benevolent dictator. <laughs> do you think she might? they might just skip all this and now since she has that? Like you were saying, Ian, like, do you think they'll... Do you think they'll show all those little details? It, I, it might be nice if they just skip the next time you see her, she's in West. <laughs> we could be so lucky, but... Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think well, like they might just like, need skip to around. Do. <laughs> yeah. Plus, they don't have any ships, so we assume yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, they gotta get. Yep, they need they burn, to get ships somewhere. Yep, they burn. All Maybe the she'll ships. just take all the slaves with her. <laughs> all the wait, what? All the dragon? <laughs> no, all the slaves. Maybe she'll just take all the slaves oh, with her. Oh, I see. Okay. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm assuming. I don't know. I've always kind of thought that. Maybe Grey Worm and Miss Sunday would get left in Slaver's Bay to kind of head the government there. They seem like they could do it. That have more sense than Tyrion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The respect mm. of the people, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, Marine anyway, but yeah. you have those other cities constantly at you. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> kill everyone there. <laughs> uh-huh. See, they don't have the weapons of mass destruction, Guile. <laughs> yeah, they do. They've got dragons. Not if Danny's off in Westeros. Well, she'll come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she yeah. gets back I two mean, weeks you know, there and two weeks back. <laughs> I mean, was you it think Bravos? she'll make it to Westeros this season? 
I think no. she's going to no. leave for Westeros this season. I hope. I don't. I saw some people um, kind of comparing the scene with uh, Danny to her father Ares, with him, you know, burning down all her enemies, and she seemed quite pleased with herself doing it. Do you think there's any any merit to that comparison? Yeah, well, I mean, absolutely. I mean, she's the scorched. You know, she's a scorched earth person, and Ares was as well. We just, you know, she, we think she's in in it for a righteous cause. I mean, she's the perfect person to fight the White Walkers. I mean, it certainly seems like she's playing it with a tinge of insanity. I mean, there's a look in her eye, and whether it's, you know, I sort of read that as, like, she knows. Well, didn't Amelia, didn't Amelia Clark say something about, you know, Danny's barely human now, or or, or something to that effect? And I think mm-hmm. that's, an, again, an interesting contrast to what they've done with John, where we're seeing that he's this guy who's been risen from the dead, but he's reacting to it in an utterly human way, whereas she's yeah. actually becoming less human. And, yeah, yeah. you know, in some ways, knowing what's beyond the wall, that's probably what's needed. I mean, she's the perfect conqueror. She's the perfect destroyer. She might not be the perfect governor, but, um, you know, what does Westeros need in the short term? They need probably a destroyer first. I I don't see her making it out of a war with the White Walkers, but I do see her being the decisive factor in it. Yeah, she'd be the only successful at this point, you know, from what we know, unless they suddenly find a big, you know, mountain of uh, the dragon glass. Yeah. So short term, good. Long term, we might have some problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there might Danny. be a tad of <laughs> madness there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I think that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. Thank you guys. Let's do some mail. Eon, you got the mail bag right. for us. I do got the mail bag. All right, okay. we got our first one from our last guest, Argostar. And it says, Hi, I wanted again to thank you for letting me guest on your show. You're also witty and insightful, and it's an honor to get to podcast with you. Aww. I hope that I can get to do it again soon. Thank you very and much. And I'm calling dibs in advance f- for the episode where Ramsey dies so I can celebrate properly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if Ramsey's dying this season or ever. Yeah, that might yeah. never come, but fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. Our next one is from Manaru Unlimited. And it says, hi, ladies. I'm kind of nervous writing, so please forgive me if I sound a little off. I'm really kind of giddy writing this. I have been listening to your podcast for about six months now. I discovered you from Radio Westeros. Whoa. I can't can't say I'm a shipper of any kind, but I love the way you bring the obvious romantic feelings shared between Jamie and Brienne. I reread their chapters during your reread, and oh my God, it is true. (laughs) Now I have to be honest. (laughs) This last episode of Game of Thrones did kind of have me rooting for Tormund and Brienne because (laughs) I couldn't resist how cute it was. So since it's just on the show, I don't feel guilty about feeling that way. Besides, it's Tormund. I keep hearing the song Hungry Eyes every time I see the dinner scene. (laughs) LOL. I'm weird, I know. Anyways, I love listening to you ladies do what you do. Thank you for taking time to provide us with such great insight. And for not always agreeing, because that would be boring. Oh, I hope that's one day. Right. <laughs> <you know. laughs> uh, she says, I hope one day I can be a part of your podcast, if that's cool. Much love from Manor- Manoro. Very cool. We'll hit you up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Booked up for season six, but um, we might have something else down the line. What a culture yeah. shock that would be, though, coming from Radio Westeros to our podcast. Oh, I know. <laughs> right. Two very different beasts. <laughs> uh, Johnny and the Kits says, Hey, ladies, I instantly thought of you when Tormund was giving Brian the look. If Larry insists on sticking by Carol's side, what if Brian decides to become a spear wife? Tormund is kissed by fire, and it's awfully cold up there. I can ship <laughs> it. LOL. Keep up the great work, Johnny and the Kits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. As you can tell, we're a little mixed. We have mixed feelings on this. Um, 
Anon says, honestly, the moment I saw the tournament and Brienne scene, my first thought was, oh, man, I can't wait to see how the ladies of Close the Door react to this. I kind of liked it myself, especially since Jamie seemed, especially Larry and Carol seemed worse than ever. I love that people are, like, thinking of us while they watch this show. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Guys. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, here, you know, I think we should say and, you know, disagree, disagree if you want to. But, I mean, I do really like Tormund. I just don't think he's the right guy for Brienne. I don't know that show Jamie is either. But, you know, I mean, I, Tormund's a great guy. Uh, yeah. Jin, I, mean, I just, I just, I want a Ginger Tarth. I'm sorry. Ginger, Ooh, Ginger Tarth is a good <laughs> ship name, too. I think we had Wenchbane, and, but Ginger Tarth might be better. That's how I know this ship Ginger will never take off. Nobody can agree on their name. <laughs> right. Says, says so someone from the Jamie and Brienne fandom who has no name. Well. <laughs> I thought it was funny for what it was. I think Brienne is just really weirded out by it. So it's, it was just a good laugh. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Oh my god, what if it does become a serious thing? <laughs> did, did anyone kind of have this week thinking, like, how did we get here? How did we get from Old Keeper to seriously discussing Brienne and Tormund? Like, <laughs> yeah, that occurred, that occurred to me. That occurred to me. I don't see it lasting, guys. I really don't. I mean, she's going to be going back to the Riverlands. I just don't see Tormund following her back like, to the Riverlands. What world are we living in that this is actually <laughs> this? It's so surreal. It's so surreal. (laughs) This is Game of Thrones. Tits and dragons. Right. Uh, Jay Ann Boleyn says, you guys predicted the Tormund Brienne eye sex last week. Well done. (laughs) It was really Daphne. She says, I switched a URL. Ah, Daphne. (laughs) And Donkey Leg. Hey, Sir Donkey Leg says, glad to see you guys took my amazing advice and started using a sign off line. It's not as cool as my sign off, keep it funky, but it's legit enough. Okay, well, I just like working them out. Fresh and spicy. No, we're just working them out. Give us a break, Donkey Leg. Right. <sighs> Allison Westra says, howdy. Regarding that Tyrion Sunday Grey Worm conversation, I know you guys didn't like it, but I did. I definitely felt uncomfortable and awkward, but I felt like that was what they were going for. There's a huge communication gap between these people and Tyrion's not able to resort to his usual go-tos. He drinks and knows things, but relying on his humor and gift of gab, in this case, probably makes him even more foreign to these folks. He'll have to find better ways. Hmm? Oh, no, go ahead. Keep going. Sorry. Okay. He'll have to find better ways to connect to help rural marine and ridiculous cock jokes are just not going to cut it. No pun intended. I even believe the purpose of including stupid ass cock jokes is so the audience feels just as uncomfortable as they do. The Sunday and Grey Worm don't know if they can trust him and probably think he's just a weirdo and there's just no common ground. It's kind of interesting that Tyrion has a better connection with those big freaking dragons than he does with Grey Worm and Masande. I'm not saying it was an awkward winning scene for anything, but I kind of enjoyed watching Tyrion flounder about and now have a better understanding of the challenges he faces. Boyfriend's going to have to dig deeper. Yeah, I mean, in light of this week's scene, I think her analysis is is spot on compared mm -hmm. to what what mine was last week. Yeah. Bravo to Bravo to Alice. Well, to yeah. be fair, I think I did say something along the lines of them just not trusting Tyrion yet. I mean, yeah, I was okay was with you. it being. I yeah, I was right last week. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong last week. <laughs> and the awkward scenes are definitely a theme this season. I think we're getting way more of them this season than we've gotten in the past five. So yeah, which I guess makes sense if you think there's char- you know, new characters or characters meeting up that haven't met in years and years. So yeah. a little awkwardness. Yeah, I, was but yeah, I think she definitely had it right on. I was fine with it being awkward. I just felt mm-hmm. like it went on a little too long. Well, they gave us Pycelle walking across the room, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that could have gone on for like 30 <laughs> more seconds, and I would have been totally happy with it. <laughs> yeah, he could have walked and picked something up and shuffled in the other closet. And they could oh, have done like the Hitchcock, the Hitchcock um, editing thing, <laughs> yeah, where oh, they God. just like edited in extra stuff. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Jeez. <laughs> Somebody needs to make a video cut of that, a fan video. <laughs> Get longer. I was, I was expecting them to add in another fart. <laughs> That would have been yeah. great, Get too. Oh, on God. It. She could make a video. <laughs> Edit that in. Whoever does the video, put that, too. Splice some fun. Aaron, some Aaron, we're looking at you. <laughs> Calling to Japan. <laughs> yeah. We got more oh, eats. We got a, yes, we do. We got a couple emails from use, useful spinster, Mo. Aww. Says, hi, ladies. Just wanted to drop you guys a quick email to say that I'm catching up on the podcast. I'm way behind, but I'm also listening to the new episodes. You are all still cracking me up at work, but I have a shiny new cubicle now, so I'm not getting <laughs> as many funny looks. Today I listened to the RPG ep- episode where you killed Valor Bullcut and was crying <laughs> laughing at my desk. <laughs> I also listened to the new podcast, and I have to say the more we see of Larry the Lapdog, the more... I'm convinced that D&D never read beyond a Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Cogman did because he wrote some of the season three Jamie stuff, but I really don't think D&D did. We haven't Why had the hell is Jamie? Episode, have we? This season. I, I don't think we have. We're due. But um, she says, why the hell is Jamie zero political as- aspirations Lannister anywhere near a small council meeting? And okay. I agree with you guys. Book Jamie. Would not be cool with Robert Strong in the King's Guard. He was pissed about Osmond Kettle Black and Burroughs Blouse when he got back to King's Landing. He called them vermin. Where hath thou gone, Jamie Lannister? Uh, <laughs> and um, she also wrote, I listened to part of episodes 100 today, and it is just a whole ball of amazing. I finally understand what the cat gif means with regards to Clotho. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> Used to you guys to walk me through season five and now six too, <laughs> along with Tumblr's gifs because I pretty much gave up on God after season four, episode four. I don't think I ever congratulated you all on a hundred episodes and counting. I'm so sorry I couldn't be part of back then. Anyway, congratulations, you guys are awesome. Thank you for your email and your kind yes. words. That was lovely. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, useful spinster. We got a couple emails from um, Lady Warblade Angel, and I just want to say thank you, Lady Blade, and I can't wait to have you back on on our podcast. We always look forward to your emails each and every week, and keep being awesome. We will. And, um, thank you. Yes. <laughs> wait, her awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we will Both. keep being awesome, and she will keep being awesome, too. Okay, that makes uh, more sense. Okay. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Uh, we got two um, comments off of iTunes. Do you want the good or the bad first? The bad, bad first. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. I'm not ending on that you note. you want the bad? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> End of the good. Okay. Our, okay. We got the first one that's titled Skip This One by <laughs> No Probables. We got two stars. And it says, there are many Game of Thrones podcasts consisting of book readers, but this one is not one of the good ones. They can <laughs> constantly complain about the writing and then proceed to add some of the worst writing suggestions imaginable. <laughs> That's not like the like podcast does not have this moment. It's kind of true. Can't be mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this, this is pretty substandard overall. I don't agree with that, however. <laughs> anyway, continue. Is there, or is that it? Is there more? Please tell me there's more. Uh, there's one that, this last one is a great podcast by okay. BBNGA. And um, we got five stars. And um, it just says, too few women podcasting about the books and the show. You all do a great job. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for that iTunes yeah. review. And that other guy, you can go fuck yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why were supposed to take criticism with good grace? No, <laughs> of course. I, I, the shit is free, kind of, except our patrons who we love. <laughs> you guys run a classy establishment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> All right. Let's, uh, if you want to reach us and send us some messages, you can at close the door and come here.tumblr.com. You can reach us at close the door and at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at door podcast and support us on Patreon forward slash close the door. Like and review us on, um, well, like and review us positively on iTunes and Google, please. <laughs> Keep your one stars, two stars to yourself. I only want fives. Um, check out our new YouTube channel. Lots of goodies there. Um, Chicky's been doing an awesome job giving us some visuals with our podcasts. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Dramas, for joining us as always. A pleasure. The pleasure was mine. Mm-hmm. I had fun. Thank you. And thank you, panel. Oh. And thank you for being such an awesome awesome host <laughs> you're welcome thank you Eon <laughs> <laughs> Eon's your favorite now <laughs> you always were my favorite child <laughs> 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 alright I'm closing the door get out <laughs>